children. Hello, Auntie. How are you today? I am fine, thank you, Mom. I hope you had a nice time during the weekend. Yes, Ma. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome to another episode of Children's World. World. Another episode of what? Children's World. World. We are not going to take the normal thing we used to take before. We are going to take something very, very different from what we used to take before. And it's going to be a missionary story. What are we going to have today? A missionary story. Again? A missionary story. Before we start, I want to ask you, who is a missionary? Yes, Prince? A missionary is someone that goes around the world to preach the gospel. A missionary is someone who goes around the world, not only in your house, not only in your church, not only in your neighborhood, but around the world to preach the gospel. We are going to be talking about a very spectacular and wonderful missionary today. Would you want to know who the missionary is? Yes. But before we hear that one, we are going to close our eyes and talk to God. Shall we pray? Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for today. We bless your name for bringing us again together in your presence. We thank you for how you have been keeping us and you brought us here again this week. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for all that you have been teaching us. We pray today. Even as you want to teach us something different from what we used to hear. Lord, we ask that you come to speak to each and every one of us. Even in the language we will understand in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and have your way. That at the end we will have cause to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we are going to talk about a missionary. This missionary is not just an ordinary missionary. This missionary is a blind missionary. Have you ever seen a blind person before? Yes. Yes. She was a blind missionary. The name of the missionary we want to talk about is... Fanny Crosby. Everybody say it. Fanny Crosby. Again. Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby. Her real name was Francis J. V. Crosby. What was her real name? Francis J. V. Crosby. Francis J. V. Crosby. Can you see her? That was her real name, Francis J. V. Crosby. Francis J. V. Crosby was born on the 24th day of March, 1820. When was she born? The 24th day of March, 1820. She was born in New York in the United States of America. And Fanny Crosby, her parents were Mercy and John Crosby. What are the names of her parents? Mercy and John Crosby. These people gave birth to Fanny, and they were a very good Christians. Very, very good Christian. In their family, they always read the Bible and they always pray every day. Do you read your Bibles? Do you pray every day in your homes? They used to pray and they used to read the Bible every day. Shortly after Fanny was born, just six weeks after she was born, she had measles. Have you heard about measles before? It's a killer disease, isn't it? But thank God, God did not allow Fanny to die. This Measles was so bad on her that she had very high temperature 
and her eyes were reddish, her lips were reddish, and unfortunately for the family, the parents, they took her to, a, to their family doctor, only for them to get there. They discovered that their family doctor traveled out of town. Ha! Huh, what do you think could have happened to Fanny? Hmm. They now went to another doctor. They didn't know that he was a quack doctor. This quack doctor, without knowing the right medicine to give to the little tiny baby, he now gave them a very hot medicine, eye drops, that they dropped in the tiny baby's eyes. And thinking that she was going to be okay, the thing damaged her eyes completely. Fanny became blind. She became totally blind because of the hot, because the drug was too hot for her tender eyes. And she became totally blind for life. Children, even though Fanny was blind, she never saw it as a problem. Can you see Fanny as a baby? Can you see her? Can you see the mommy and the daddy? Yes. When they were attending to her, they thought she was going to be okay, but she never got better. And she became blind. Fanny did not bother. But what she did was, she kept growing. She didn't bother because the blindness didn't stop her from doing anything. It didn't stop her from crawling where she was supposed to crawl. It didn't stop her from walking where she was supposed to walk. She didn't stop her from running where she was supposed to run. Neither did it stop her from eating or not knowing where her mouth was. She was doing everything like a normal child. But something terrible happened. Not too long after that time, her father died. Ah, what do you think would be the, 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 the hope of Fanny? She was still small. Her father now died, coupled with the fact that she was blind. Now, she didn't stop reading the Bible, neither did she stop praying. Fanny was living with her grandma. And every day, grandma will read the Bible with her. She will also pray with her. She will always tell her, don't worry, everything is going to be well with you. You are blind. God allowed it because he knew that he would do, use you to do greater things in life. Fanny believed it. And there was a memory verse that the mommy used to teach Fanny. And that memory verse was from Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Everybody say it. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. And it says, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Fanny loved that verse so much. Anything she wants to do, sometimes some people will say, go away, after all you are blind. You say it doesn't matter, even though I am blind, I know I have Jesus right inside of my heart. And I know I can do all things. If there is anything you can do, because you have eyes, without eyes, I can do all things. Not by my power, not by my strength, but through Christ who strengthens me. So she held on to that verse and she kept on. Now for her to go to school was a problem. Because if she has to go to school, she must go to a special school. Now, they now got admission for her into the, the institution of the blind. The institution of the blind in America. And finally started going to school there. Because she had a very careful training during her childhood by her grandma, who was always teaching her the word of God. Children, let me tell you, no matter what you learn, no matter what you know, no matter what your parents give to you, if you don't have Christ or they don't give Christ to you, you are doomed. You are what? You are doomed, which means you are in trouble. Because without Christ, you cannot do anything meaningful. Even though you feel you are making progress, you will not be happy even in that progress you are making. Why? Because you don't have Jesus in your hearts. 
Children, do you have Jesus in your heart? I just want you to keep that one in your heart and just keep it there. Don't talk. Children, she was growing and she was growing like a giant in the Lord Jesus Christ. She was becoming a spiritual giant and her grandmother, just like the grandmother of Timothy, was teaching Timothy. She was teaching Fanny. And Fanny was becoming a very big spiritual giant. Grandma was not only teaching Fanny at a point. Grandma was teaching even other children in the neighborhood. She was teaching them the Bible. She was teaching them songs. Can you see grandma sitting down with other children in the neighborhood, learning and hearing from God? Just the way you are sitting down here, hearing from God. You are not hearing from me, but you are hearing from who? God. Good. She was teaching them. And all of them were listening and Fanny was learning very, very fast. Because grandma was always teaching them the word of God. Even though Fanny was blind, Fanny was able to memorize. You know what it means to memorize? To read the Bible. She read from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Can anybody read Genesis chapter 1? From verse 1 to the end. 1 to the end, not chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to the end of chapter 1. Can you? No. Fanny was blind. She read the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy, five books. She read it, not only that, she read a greater part of the New Testament. She read the book of Proverbs and a many of the Psalms with blindness. She was reading. You begin to wonder, why was she, what was the secret? Because she had Jesus in her and she was willing to learn. She was ready to learn. She was a very serious-minded child. She was not always playful. Yes, she used to play, but she doesn't play all the time. Like some of us who play and play and play, we can watch cartoons from morning till night, we will dance, we will play. Some of us will fight. Fanny was not like that. Fanny was a very serious-minded girl. Now, in 1835 was when she got the admission into that institution of the blind in America. She was 15 years old. How old was she? 15 years old. In that school, she continued as a student and later she became a teacher. When she finished schooling, because of her excellence, because she was exceptional among all her peers, they had to employ her to become a teacher in the school. Children, what God expects of you is to excel. That is why he said, you will always be the head and not the tail. You will always be the first and not the last. So if you are the last in your class, tell yourself, say, God, I don't like this. I want to excel. Your word says, I will be the first and not the last. So she was doing very, very well. Children, she was in that school for 23 years. How many years? 23 years. How many years? 23 years. Like I said, she was very brilliant and she always wanted to learn. Children, be willing to learn. When they are teaching you, be willing to listen. Understand what they are teaching you and she spent her time wisely. Her blindness did not stop her from anything. It was not a problem to her at all. While in the institution of the blind, Fanny grew to become an internationally known writer of poems. She was also writing poems internationally all over the world. She entertained many American presidents with her rich poems, she won laurels, various laurels, that is, various prizes. She went, that is, she met the big and the mighty men of American land. 
Then, in 1843, are you listening? At the age of 23, while she was still at the institute, she met one young man who was also blind. His name was Alexander Val Austin. Everybody say it. Alexander Val Austin. I didn't hear you. Alexander Val Austin. He was also blind. He was a pianist. You know who a pianist is? So they met and they fell in love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They fell in love. They loved God. They feared God. They obeyed God. They did everything God says they should do. They fell in love. They just liked each other. And they kept working until they agreed to get married. On the 5th of March, 1858, at the age of 38, they got married. At what age did Fanny get married? 38 years. She got married. And immediately after the marriage, God blessed them with a baby boy. Very handsome baby boy. They were very happy. You know, when a baby is born, everybody will be excited, isn't it? They were very happy. And all of a sudden, something bad happened. And the baby stopped breathing. The baby died. Ah. If you were funny, will you be happy? No. Will you be happy? No. They were not happy at all. They were not happy. But they, because they were children of God, they comforted themselves in the Lord. They just encouraged themselves in the Lord. But what did they say? They said the angels came down and took our infant up to God and his throne. The angel of God did what? Came down, took the child up to God and the throne of God. So although Fanny had known the Lord right from her youth, it was not until 1850, when she was 30 years old, that she totally and fully committed her life to Christ. She gave everything. She said, Jesus, I surrender everything to you. And she became a full-time missionary. Now, she composed so many hymns and songs. In fact, the speed at which she was, you know, composing her songs was so much that it was, well, people were wondering how she was doing it. Her first hymn became known all over the world, and that was, Pass Me Not a Gentle Savior. Do you know it? Yeah. Okay. Very soon we'll go to the Outlook Center, and we are going to sing some of those uh, songs. That was the very first song she composed. And this song went all over the world. Everybody was singing it. And as many that heard it, that we are singing it, we are touched. Some of them who were bad boys and girls came and surrendered to her. Said, Jesus, I don't want to be a bad boy again. I don't want to be a bad girl again. I just want to be a good child for you. Now, children, would you want to see some other of her songs that she sang? Yes. That she wrote? Yes. Now, we are going to pause from here and we'll go to the Outlook Center so that we'll go and see some of her songs, some of her hymns that she wrote. Are we ready? Yes. Okay, let's go to the Outlook Center.
Hello children! Hello auntie! You are welcome back to the treasure center. Did you see some of the songs of Fanny Crosby at the Outlook Center? Yes! I hope that we have quite good songs. Yes! And I'm sure some of you must have heard some of them in the past. Look at what Fanny said. She said something to herself. She said, in fact, the blindness that God allowed to come her way has brought a very big blessing to her life. So she was not regretting because she was using that her blindness, composing poems, writing songs, and people were listening to those songs and they were being touched and they were coming to know Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. She was using her song to save lives. She was using it to minister to so many past American presidents, even William Henry Harrison. She ministered to him through her song Fanny composed her hymns through serious communion with God. She wouldn't have just done it. Anytime she wants to write a song, she will go to God. She will pray to God. The Bible says God gives songs at night. She will pray to God and God will give her the songs to write. And it is not surprising that before <coughs> Fanny died, she composed over 9,000 songs and poems which was all over the world. She preached to drug addicts, she preached to outcasts, drunkards, and of course, her favorite verse was always Philippians 4.13. Fanny was not tired. She was traveling all over the world, preaching the gospel with her songs. Now, in the early hours, of the 12th of February, 1915, at the age of 95, Fanny went into glory. She went and slept, and she never woke up again. And that was how she was safe in the arms of her master, Jesus. You know, you also sang that song at the Outlook Center, safe in the arms of Jesus. Now, in conclusion, for an incredibly remarkable life in the face of terrible problems and hindrances, it was not a challenge at all to her. As they grow up to know the Lord Jesus Christ, children, you should also know that there is nothing in your life that can hinder you from knowing the Lord. You can know the Lord, you can preach to your friends, you can preach to your neighbors, you can preach to anybody. The most important thing is to know the Lord and to live for Him all the days of your life. And even children at home, make sure nothing can stand as a hindrance. If a blind girl should touch life, souls for Christ, even you can touch lives. Nothing will be a hindrance to you. Remember Philippians 4.13, always you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We appreciate you for the life of Fanny Crosby. We thank you because you've used her to touch so many lives. We pray, oh God, that even these ones, that are listening and the ones that are listening and watching at home all over the world. Lord, you will use them as well. Nothing will be a hindrance to their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, children. Make sure as you go back, remember COVID-19 is still there. Make sure you always wash your hands very well. Make sure you wear your face mask and make sure you use your sanitizers. Don't forget to keep social distance. God bless you. Bye. Bye.